Talk into the microphone, Margaret. All right, but ultimately, <laughs> but ultimately, the cause of the crisis is not just a decade of greed on Wall Street, but three decades of growing inequality, where the share of income and wealth for those at the top has just increased, while it's gotten tougher for everyone else. Oh. Corporate profits right now, in the midst of this crisis, are at their highest level ever. In 1980, CEO pay was 50 times that of the average worker. Now it's 350 oh! times. Oh! Oh! CEO pay is up 350 percent since 1990. Average workers' pay is up 4 percent. And since 1999, family incomes have actually gone down. Wages, as a percent of the economy, are at their lowest. The U.S. has the most unequal income distribution in the developed world and is less equal than even Egypt, India, China, and Iran. The top 1% in the income distribution get 23% of total income. The top 1% in wealth own almost 40% of all private wealth in this country. Wow. The median net worth of whites in the U.S. is 15 times the median net worth of African Americans and Latinos. In, talk to me. in 2007, the top 1% share of national income peaked at 23.5%. The only other year since 1913 that the wealthy had claimed such a large share of national income, 1928, when the top 1% share was 23.9%. The following year, the stock market crashed and the Great Depression began. After peaking again in 2007, the U.S. stock market Of the 
charging members of Virginia Forest Watch. She continues to be active in the social justice community, and she just got back from D.C. where she participated in a solidarity event for Occupy Wall Street. Keep it, kiss I said, it. <laughs> thank you, Margaret, and thank all of you for coming out. This is one, this is one of, of 950 such events throughout the world in 82 countries. Why are we here? We are here to address the injustice perpetrated, perpetrated upon the majority of Americans who have witnessed their civil rights eroded have been asked to bail out Wall Street and the largest banks as they continue to profit at the expense of taxpayers. Now, many of us here may not be directly affected by some of the issues being addressed by the original occupiers. However, as citizens in good conscience, we stand in solidarity with those who have lost their homes through illegal foreclosure and fraudulent mortgage practices. We stand with those who have lost their jobs because American corporations have, have outsourced their jobs or moved the entire operation offshore, not only to reap larger profits, but to avoid paying taxes. Yeah. Yeah. Put the sign down. <laughs> we stand with the students who are saddled with huge debt because of college loans and after graduating cannot find employment to match their educational yeah. background. Yeah. We stand with those workers who face inequality and, in, and discrimination in the workplace yeah. based on age, gender, yeah. race, yeah. or sexual orientation. Yeah. Yeah. Walmart is a good example. right to negotiate for better pay and working conditions. Yeah. 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 The continuation of union busting. Yeah. We stand for fair wages and not the enormous discrepancy between the average worker and top management. The New York Times reported on Monday that the median household income actually declined twice as fast during the recovery than during the prior two-year recession. Wow. And I ask, what recovery and where are the jobs? We stand with the farm workers and against industrial agriculture, which poisons the food supply and the environment through the use of harmful chemicals. And the human and agricultural experiment of genetically modified crops, which are not labeled in this country. That's right. against torture and the murder of innocent civilians through taxpayer funded We stand against government subsidies for dirty energy, such as oil and coal, yes. and destroying our mountains by the process of mountaintop removal. These are just some of the grievances. There are many others. And they are not vague, as reported by the Associated Press and other media outlets. Thank you. Right. Now is the time to concentrate on human needs and not corporate greed. Yeah. 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 Corporations are not human beings, as professed by the Supreme Court. Yeah. 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 Corporations are created by state governments as subordinate public entities through the chartering process, and thus cannot act to deny people's rights to safety, such as untainted food, clean air, and clean water, liberty, such as free press or the right to assemble, as was recently denied in Roanoke in the market building. That's right. That's right. Corporations whose solitary social responsibility is to increase profits collaborate with government officials they buy off to create ever more avenues of the endless accumulation of wealth on the back of labor. Yes. Right. Yes. We, stand, right. We, stand, we stand for a just tax system when everyone pays their fair share in accordance with their circumstances. As, as Elizabeth Warren said, and I quote, 
quote, there is no There is nobody in this country who got rich on his own. That thriving entrepreneurs make their goods on the roads the rest of us pay for. And hire workers the rest of us pay to educate. Police and firefighters also paid for by the rest of us protect the factory workers' property. As a result, our underlying social contract requires this hardworking but fortunate soul to take a hunk of his profits and pay forward for the next kid who comes along. In other words, there are no self-made people because we are all part of society. by Wall Street and the corporations who dictate the laws and regulations and the immense power the financial world holds out over our government. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I've been told I went way over. I, so I'll, I'll no end my comments by saying, this is only the beginning, folks. We just can't do this one day. We have to change our, our, our lifestyle. We have to start working toward a sustainable community, sustainable environment. We have to buy locally. We can't support the big boxes and the corporations because that's not going to change the system. Thank you. Socialists and folks like you all back in 1970 uh, voted for Ronald Reagan in 1980, took over Wall Street, and um, have now turned this country into a place run by pirates, gamblers, 
Yeah. Degenerates. Yeah. Parasites. People who would balance the budget on the backs of uh, the elderly, the sick, the young, and um, we have a society now that has descended into barbarism. And That's I'm a right. historian, and I can tell you right now, when Rome fell to the barbarians, it was a thousand years before European civilization uh, recovered. And we're on that road now. Uh -oh. And uh, as I said, I'm not, I'm not happy about this. I'm not happy about this at all, because any society that stifles its young people is a society not worth preserving. The level of any civilization is how you treat your elderly people and how you treat your young people. That's right. And the level of this civilization is going go. down, I hope you can hear that, it's going yeah. down exponentially. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, many of us, uh, all, all of us here are not, well, hopefully we're not allow that to take place because, uh, again, if... Uh, uh, all uh, those of us who work at Virginia Tech are here to make sure that young people have opportunities. And uh, those of you who are parents or grandparents, you do not want to see uh, your kids uh, uh, wind up. Now, uh, you know, wrap this up by saying, um, by quoting perhaps the greatest, the, this expresses the way I feel nowadays, uh, perhaps the greatest rap song ever put out. It's the message by Grandmaster Flash, and it goes like this. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. Yeah! Thank you so much. Our next speaker, Penny Franklin. She supported her family for decades by working on a loading dock. She served as president of the union IUECWA, local 82160. She also became chair of the local NAACP, and if that wasn't enough, she was asked to run for the school board. Of course she did, and of course she won! She became the first African American ever elected in this county in 1999, and she took office in 2000. The turn of the century, that's how long it took in this county, but she did it! Give it up! Between 2008 and 2010, we lost half of the workforce. That was over 150 people, and they have not come back to work yet. They don't have benefits now, benefits that unions fought for. Were it not for unions in this country, you would not have weekends. Yeah. You would not have security. Yeah. You would not have all the pleasures that you have as working people. Hey. And they're trying to bust these unions because unions stand up to corporations and say this should be a fair yeah. world for yeah. all working people. being taken away from public education is a crime. Yeah. We have children who are graduating from high schools in this country. When they graduate, they can't read. Right. They do not have the skills to function in our society, more or less a global society. Right. Yeah. This has got to change. These corporations want to keep us dumb by not educating us. They want to keep us sick by making sure health care does not be available, is not available to each and every one who needs it. We have, we have to stay in these streets. I have been waiting for an opportunity to be among folks who understand the only way to take back this country from folks who make millions and sit back and sip wine, waiting for us just to die, quite frankly, because there are millions of folks to take our place as they think. It is time to take the stand and say no more. No more! No more! No more! No more! No more! No more! And as an African American in this country, where the thought that racism is dead, and it is not, because we elected a black president means nothing. All it has meant to us is to make sure he is not elected to a second term. These corporations are sitting on billions of dollars, millions of jobs that they keep calling for him to create. He cannot open up these factories. We work 10-hour days. 
with less people putting out more product and so that the stakeholders can have bigger paychecks. That's right. And our paychecks do not reflect the profits. There are other people who want to speak, but I'm saying people, you need to, you need to call your congressmen. You need to hold these elected officials accountable for what they're not doing. And these corporate, these corporate people who are paying them off, they are paying them off at, on our backs. They sit with a lifetime pension. We may never ever see Social Security if they have something to do with it, more or less Medicare. They are not everything that this country has put in place to help the marginalized folks. They are trying to rip it out because it costs them money. It should be about people! Program in Africana Studies, and she is the mama of a brown dog named Bay. She wanted me to mention Bay. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming out today. Can you all hear me, or am I shrieking? Good, that's good. All right. I'm here today to speak on behalf, not on behalf, but speak to the experiences of students that are make up part of the 99 percent. Right now, we're being told, and we have been told, that part of the American dream is going to school, getting an education. In doing that, we'll be able to get better jobs, higher paying salaries, make more money, support our families. This is a lie. This is not true. Big lie. Woo! Woo! Tuition rates have doubled at twice the rate of, of inflation. That means that students are paying more for an education that is worth less. Why are we only funding public education up through the 12th grade when you now need at least a bachelor's degree to make a sizable increase in your income? As part of the 99%, I would like to say that students followed a very strong tradition of student protest. In the 1960s, even in the 1950s, the civil rights movement, Students for a Democratic Society, the establishment of various programs like the Black Studies program, like San Francisco State University was one of the first, if not the first. This is a tradition we follow in. We need to stand up for what is ours, our future. This is what we need to be doing. Yeah. 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 Education is a privilege. Yeah. Education is a common good. Yeah. October 15th has been pronounced by Occupy Wall Street and supporting occupancies as a day for action to forgive student debt. That doesn't mean we want a free education, but what that means is that we want to make sure that we get the value out of the money we've invested into this system. We want to make sure that we're not being profited off of because we're paying money to do something that isn't even true anymore. The American dream is a dream, I saw a sign, because you have to be asleep to believe it. while banks and corporations are being bailed out in the trillions that has 12 zeros after it. 12. Bail us out. You have, you have schools for profit. You have University of Phoenix, which Goldman Sachs now has a 41% stake in it. They own 41% of University of Phoenix. They profit off of selling an education that may not get you a better job by promoting online education for people that can't afford or don't have time or have children of families and cannot go to traditional educations. Their, their profits have tripled in the last five years, in the billions. They are making almost three billion dollars off of the University of Phoenix system. They are preying on people and making money. You've heard of the subprime loans, the mortgages. Apply that to the education system. That is what is happening. Goldman Sachs is profiting off of University of Phoenix. They are pillaging the futures of America. And why are we sitting here and doing nothing? Not, not us, we're, we're here. But we need to really speak out. We need to own this country. What does it mean to get an education if we're not going to use it? What does it mean that kids can increasingly have to take these SOLs which just tell them to regurgitate information which may or may not mean anything? 
America needs to wake up and realize the history of how we came to be here today. We need to be able to make the links. What are these links? Follow the trail of capital. Follow the greed. Follow the money. That's right. Follow the money. That's greed. That is all greed. Why don't we value human life? We need to value all human life. Thank you. Well, thank you.
abolitionist Frederick Douglass, power concedes nothing without a demand. And these demands need to come from the streets, from the people willing to do the work and take the risks and push the envelope of political action to make their voices heard and force the powers that be to respond. This is how ordinary people have expanded the meaning of democracy, how we have expanded the definition of who counts as an American and who has what rights. Democracy looks like the generations of the civil rights struggle that culminated in the 1960s and forced President Johnson and Congress to pass the Civil Rights Act. <laughs> Democracy looks like the generations of working people's struggles that culminated in the massive strike waves of the 1930s and forced President Roosevelt to put guarantees to workers in the New Deal that gave them the right to collectively bargain and gave them the power, and all of us here the power, to earn a living wage. Thousand million, whatever dollars, just so he can say, I have my bachelor's, I have my master's. 
That is not what America is about. We are told you get your education, you go out and you fight hard, you do the right thing. Everybody here has done the right thing, and it has not made a difference. And now we are here with our boots on. We are the 99%. We don't need the president. We don't need the Congress. We don't need nobody to tell us what we're doing is right, because we know it's right. So if you are with the 99%, if you want to keep the unions, if you want to keep your jobs, then put your boots on. Put your boots on when you go to work. Put your boots on when you go to church. Put your boots on when you go to the store. And if somebody asks you who you are before you even give them your name, you say, I am the 99%.
Defending Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, Charlie. Y'all wave your hands if I'm not holding this mic close enough. It's really, really great to see this many folks in Blacksburg again. Uh, it's been, I don't know, 45 years. Uh, it's been a long time. Anyway, I, I'm really glad to see y'all. Uh, I'm sure there's some students out there. Uh, Jonathan, wave your hand. There he is. I know he's a student. I'm related to him. Uh, I, uh, it, 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 it's, it's great to be following so many incredibly wonderful speakers. Penny and Pamela and, well, the only problem was Mary did my speech. I, I, I don't really have anything. Well, I, I've got plenty to talk about. Anyway, uh, if any of you are out of state students, uh, does anybody not know who Bob McDonald is? Because I'm going to say a few things about him, and I just want to make sure everybody knows who I'm talking about. He's the governor of the state. The first thing that Bob McDonald did when he came into office was he tried to kill something called the self-directed home-based health care program funded by Medicaid for the elderly and for the disabled. Right. Uh, he said he was doing it to balance the budget. And we know what's been happening with debt. All of a sudden, the debt that George Bush ran up, that was no big deal. But now, the debt is all important. You've got to close schools. You've got to close post offices. You've got to close hospitals. You've got to close everything that we need to survive to balance the budget, because that's the most important thing. That's BS. The most important thing is that people can live and prosper. So that's what I want to talk about. <laughs> anyway, Bob McDonald did not succeed in closing down self-directed home-based health care because caregivers that administer this care were organizing all over the state. And the, the guy who's bobbing his head up and down is the guy who's helping me. We volunteer with something called VAPCA, the Virginia Association of Personal Care Assistants. And we knew that we had the fight of a life on our hands, and we mobilized caregivers all over the state to talk to their delegates and talk to their senators. And fortunately, there were enough Republicans who, who, who didn't really know what Bob McDonald was up to. They thought he really wanted to balance the budget. No, he was trying to get rid of organized caregivers. Right. He was trying to get rid of voices that would fight him. Right. That's right. Penny said it best. You know, the thing that's great about unions is they fight. They yeah. fight for the people. Yeah. A lot of Republicans went to Bob McDonald and said, are you crazy? Your, your plan has, you're going to destroy this program and say that half Half of the worst cases are going to be taken out of their homes and put into nursing homes. The other half would be taking care of whoever wants to take care of them with no resources. Take care of them for free. So if you got family and friends that live with you, you're okay. Wrap up, my God. <laughs> Keep going. Couple of days. All right, listen. We got the program saved, and then when they tried to cut 5% from the $8.5 an hour that the caregivers gave, we got it to where they only cut 1%. You know, that's not a victory. And that's the main thing I think that has to be learned in this great movement that's beginning right now is that victories don't come from electing a perfect Congress, a perfect president. It comes from people being scared, people at the top being scared to death that they can't run things anymore. They lose the ability to rule. And their ability to rule is not just from the state houses and the governor's mansions and the halls of Congress and the White House. 
their ability to rule. To lose that means they can't throw people out of foreclosed homes anymore. They can't shut down post offices in rural areas anymore. They can't close hospitals and schools. They can't jack up prices for students anymore. When they lose that ability, we're going to see what democracy looks like then. We will live in a world of our own making. And uh, guys, I will hang around and talk with anybody who wants to talk. Right now, we got to do. We got to put our marching shoes on and go through the streets and raise a little hell. showed up on Adbusters a couple months ago, and I was actually up in Occupy DC last weekend, which is a really incredible experience. Um, so why am I here today? Well, Ronald Reagan famously asked in the 19 pre 1980 presidential election, are you better off now than you were four years ago? No. Hell no. This, this resonated with people, though. Oh, yeah. And why? Because America, it wasn't better than it was a half decade ago, or even a decade ago. Yet we stand here today in 2011, and I ask you, are we better off now than we were 30 years ago? No! Are we better off now than when Ronald Reagan turned a generation of blue-collar workers against supporting their own interests? No! I humbly submit to you that today, even though we have iPhones and flat-screen TV, Xboxes and the Internet, the 99% are not better off than they were 30 years ago. No! And this is because, since the 1970s, we have radically departed from the middle class economy and democracy that made our post-war nation so great. Today we live in the most e one of the most economically unequal nations in the world, but because we do not realize it, because we are drowning in a sea of de debt. I come here today not to chant tax the rich or down with capitalism, because I believe that many rich people deserve their incomes, and that capitalism can be a very good economic system. But I'm here today yes. because since 1980, we have departed from the capitalism of our parents and grandparents and entered an economic system that is much more appropriately called corporatocracy. Yes! yes! About socializing losses and yeah. privatizing profits. And I'm not okay with that, and I hope y'all aren't either. Yeah. Our political leaders, left and right, have decimated a government that was built by the people and for the people. We have slashed taxes and the social safety net, and we have turned our regulatory agencies into pawns of the interests that they are supposed to control. Yes! And for a generation, people have looked at government... Uh, sorry. <laughs> for a generation, people have looked at government that is simultaneously bloated and failing, and they have said, damn the government, it isn't looking after my interests. Why shouldn't it exist? And I say the Occupy Wall Street movement is America awakening from the nightmare slumber of inequality to a dawning of a new age of security and excess, not just for CEOs, but for average Joes. Yeah. Yeah. We demand that the 
that the EPA no longer slaps Don Blankenship on the wrist when his mines are found to have hundreds of safety violations. Yes. We demand that the SEC doesn't sit back and watch big banks literally engage in the exact same 